Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Jesus has conquered death in the grave for you and me. Our text from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, Jesus' words, Be merciful, just as your Father in heaven is merciful. These are the words of our text. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be multiplied to you now and forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's an old saying, it goes this way, revenge is a dish best served cold. What in the world does that mean? It means that revenge is often a hot-blooded response, a, a furious lashing out at someone else. However, if you truly want to get revenge, if you really want to punish your enemy, you must not act in the heat of the moment. You must stop. And in a cold and calculating manner, determine how best to take revenge on someone else. Cold-blooded revenge is better than hot-blooded revenge. The sons of Jacob knew and understood this. They were experts at getting cold-blooded revenge upon others. With cold and calculating hearts, they sold their brother Joseph into slavery in Egypt. With cold-blooded hearts, they let their father believe that Joseph was attacked by a wild animal and was killed by that animal. This was cold-blooded revenge for Joseph's coat of many colors and his God-given dreams. When their sister was violated, they did not act in the heat of the moment. They waited and they planned and they took revenge upon the man who hurt their sister. But not only him, they took revenge upon all of the men living in that city. Simeon and Levi slaughtered, murdered every man in that town in cold blood. They knew revenge is a dish best served cold. But now years have gone by. The shoe is on the other foot. The sons of Jacob are afraid. They are afraid that they are going to be on the receiving end of vengeance. Jacob, their father, has died. And they believe that now their brother Joseph, whom they sold into slavery to Egypt, is going to take cold-blooded revenge upon them. They think that Joseph has been biding his time, waiting, planning, waiting for the day when dad Jacob died. And now that dad is dead, Joseph is going to get even with his brothers for what they did to him. Now you might ask, why would Joseph's brothers think such a thing? Well, it's simple. It's because that's what they would do. If they were in Joseph's place, it's because that's how they are. That's what they've done, these brothers of Joseph. And they think that Joseph is just like them. They would serve up revenge as a dish best served cold. And now they believe that Joseph is going to do that very same thing to them. And they are afraid, and they are shaking in their sandals, and they are waiting and expecting Joseph to punish them, enslave them, probably even kill them. What would you do if you were Joseph? Would you be thinking revenge is a dish best served cold? Would you get even with the brothers who sold you into slavery? Have you ever done that? Gotten even with somebody else, taken revenge on someone for what they've done to you? Taken revenge on someone who hurt you? 
If you have, what was that like? What was that like for you? How did it feel? How did you feel after you had taken your revenge and gotten even with them? So the sons of Jacob get together and they say to one another, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? And then these sons of Jacob come up with a plan. They, these guys are always coming up with a plan of one type or another and they come up with their plan and they send a note to Joseph. Today it would be a text message. And their note says this, Your father left these instructions before he died. Hogwash. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you, as your father, to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of your servants of the God of your father. And their note to Joseph is just a bold-faced lie, a cold-blooded and calculating lie from brothers who are experts in lying and deceiving. And if you were Joseph, what would you do? What would you say when you got that note from your brothers? Do you remember what Joseph did in our Old Testament reading? The Bible tells us. It tells us what Joseph did. What Joseph did was, when their message came to him, Joseph wept. He broke down and wept. Why did Joseph weep? Because Joseph knows that Jacob never left that message for Joseph. Joseph knows his brothers are lying to him again. These brothers haven't changed at all. But worst of all, Joseph knows that his brothers do not believe that he forgives them and that he loves them and that he is filled with mercy for them. They think that Joseph is just like them. They think that Joseph is a cold-hearted snake like them. And when Joseph gets their note, he breaks down and weeps. If you were in Joseph's sandals, what would you do? Would you weep too? Have you ever loved someone, but they didn't believe that you loved them? No matter how hard you tried to show them or to tell them that you love them, they just wouldn't believe it. Or have you ever forgiven someone, but they don't believe your forgiveness? Or have you ever shown mercy to someone and been rejected by them? Did you weep like Joseph? And then we read this in the book of Genesis. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before Joseph. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones, your children. And Joseph reassured them, and he spoke kindly to them. Joseph is not a man of revenge. He is a man of mercy, a man of love, a man of forgiveness, a man of wisdom. And as Joseph looks back over the years, over all the events that have taken place since his brothers sold him into, him into slavery in Egypt, Joseph now sees the hand of God at work in all of the wicked actions that his brothers had done and how God has brought all of this about for good. God took the cold-hearted vengeance of Joseph's brothers and God used it to save their entire family from a famine that was decades away that now has come. And Joseph is wise and Joseph is merciful. And he isn't going to treat his brothers as their sin deserves. 
There are two things that we can take away from this story of Joseph and our gospel reading for this morning. First, God calls you and me. God calls us to be like Joseph. No more than that, to be like Jesus, to be like our Father in heaven. For Jesus says to you and me in our gospel reading this morning, be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. Revenge might be a dish best served cold, but not for you and me. We are the redeemed children of God. And while all around us, people are planning and taking revenge on their former spouse, their relatives, their children, their co-workers, their competition, their enemies, this is not the way it is to be for you and me. When we look at our nation, we look an awful lot like the sons of Jacob, don't we? Revenge is consuming our nation. Revenge is destroying our unity as Americans. Revenge is eating our country from the inside out. There is little mercy on the streets of America today. And wisdom in our land and among our leaders is hard to find. And it seems that there is only hatred and getting even and settling scores. And you and me, we are not to be part of that. How can we who have died to vengeance in the waters of our baptism continue to live in the way of revenge? How can we take revenge when our crucified Jesus prayed for his enemies from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. How can we who are shown mercy and forgiveness from God turn around and exact revenge and withhold mercy and forgiveness from others? Listen to Jesus. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. You know, in order to take revenge on someone, we must first judge our neighbor. And we must condemn them in our heart and refuse to forgive them before we can take revenge. And Jesus warns you and me, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. In other words, if you exact revenge then you will suffer the wrath of God. Believe me, you don't want to suffer the wrath of God. It's a horrible thing. Just ask Jesus. Because he suffered the wrath of God on Calvary's cross. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus says to you and me, a student is not above his teacher. But everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Jesus is our teacher. We are like Jesus, our Savior. We are baptized into his death and his resurrection. And the old way of revenge is drowned in you and me. And the new way, the new life of mercy and forgiveness abounds in your heart and mine. It beats in our heart. And so leave revenge and its cold dish because mercy is the best dish to serve. Jesus teaches us, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye and then, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Showing mercy means not pointing out all of the failures and mistakes and sins of your spouse and your children and lording those mistakes and sins over them. Do not exasperate them by riding them day after day with criticism and sarcasm and cruelty. Let your words be kind and gentle and helpful and encouraging 
to one another. Consider the Lord Jesus, who is slow to anger and abounding in love and mercy for you. Consider the Lord Jesus, who offered his life in your place as a sacrifice to reconcile you with God. Consider Jesus, who speaks to you in truth and in love. The Holy Spirit will train you and lead you in kindness and gentleness. He will give you patience and enable you to show mercy to those who have hurt you and to lead you to forgive as you have been forgiven. Are you planning revenge on someone? Even now this morning? Stop. Don't do it. It might be a dish best served cold in the eyes of the world. But Christian, it is not a dish for you to serve. Be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. Well, here's the second takeaway from the story of Joseph and his brothers. Your Father in heaven is merciful to you. And that's for you to take to heart this morning. God is merciful to you. He is full of forgiveness for you. And he has covered all of your sins. God is not biding his time, planning and waiting to take revenge on you at the moment you least expect it. He is not going to pull the rug of his mercy out from under your feet and treat you as your sins deserve. He is not waiting to serve up a dish of cold revenge to you because of some sin, something that you did years long, long ago. God loves you, and he is filled with mercy for you. And he is full of forgiveness for you. His son gave himself on the cross in your place. And his blood covers all of your sins and it cleanses you from all of your unrighteousness. Your sins from long ago, they're forgotten. They're removed as far as the east is from the west. And God is not waiting to get even with you. Your sins of this day are forgiven and your sins of tomorrow are already covered by the blood of Christ. For Jesus' sake, God does not remember your sins anymore. He is not preparing revenge for you. He is preparing an eternal home for you. And nothing in all of creation can separate you from him. Joseph's brothers could not believe that Joseph would be merciful to them. And sometimes we sinners struggle to believe that God has really forgiven all of our sin. Joseph's brothers thought that Joseph was like them, cruel, vengeful, calculating, and cold. And like them, we think that God is like us, but he's not. He gathers you and me like Joseph gathered his brothers. He gathers us close to himself. And he says to you, I am Jesus, your brother. I forgive you. I am merciful to you. I will take care of you and your children and your grandchildren. I will raise you from the dead and I will give you everlasting life. And you will be free from sin and Satan and death forever. And Jesus reassures us. And Jesus speaks kindly and gently to us. And he keeps us. And he tells us that nothing and no one in all of creation can separate us from his love. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord to life everlasting. Amen.